It all starts with a question. What do I think people really should know before they get themselves into librarianship? My name is Peter, and this is Stacks and Facts. When I first started making Stacks and Facts, my intent was to make a channel about library and information science that would help people outside of the field understand it better. I like to joke that I make library propaganda because I'm doing this with an explicit agenda. First, I want to help the masses understand what LAS even is and what librarians even do. And second, to make the profession itself better by thinking about itself in ways that I'm not always sure that it does. As I've kept making videos though, and as my audience has grown, I've started to notice a couple of things. First, most of y'all are folks who want to become librarians, or think you might want to, and are in various stages of making that happen. Typically, this has been folks who are thinking about going into either librarianship or some other aspect of information science, uh, folks who are already in library school, uh, and folks who have recently finished library school and are in the same place as me, more or less, career-wise. If you go and look at the videos I've made over the past few years, you can see, maybe, how the topics I've covered have changed over time to reflect who my audience has become. And I love it, but I would like to make some more videos about LIS fundamentals again, it's just that those tend to take a lot more time and energy to put together than I tend to have. The second thing I've noticed, or maybe realized is a better way to put it, is that because this is who my audience is, the majority of the questions I get reflect that. On top of comments about videos, I tend to get about two or three emails a month asking me for career advice, typically from folks who are thinking about going to library school but don't already know where else to go to ask questions. Honestly, I like these emails because I see it as another way for me to give back and help the profession improve itself. When I was first considering going to library school, I was in the same boat and I didn't really know where to turn with my own questions, so I'm glad I can fill that demand. But it's also incredibly humbling and a big reminder of the influence, or power, that I have over other people's lives and choices. With these two points in mind though, I have to own up to the fact that there are some things I've wanted to talk about regarding librarianship, but never have because I was worried that maybe it would clash with the feel or the vibes of the rest of the channel. And lately, now that I'm part of the librarian workforce, I also think about how what I say on here might impact my employment prospects. In any case, it's time for me to fix that because I owe it to you. And since I have the platform, I have the responsibility. So with that long-winded introduction out of the way, here are three things that I think you should know before you become a librarian. Number one, good librarians care about people infinitely more than they care about books. I hear from so many people all the time that they love books and that it's a dream of theirs to become a librarian because what a life it must be to be surrounded by books all the time. And almost every time I, I cringe inwardly just a little because it's just such a fundamental misunderstanding of what librarianship is. Yes, libraries have literal tons of books, but they don't exist in a vacuum. Libraries and the books in them exist because people need access to information, and librarians exist to help put people into meaningful contact with information sources. Wanting to become a librarian because you love books is like saying, I want to become a surgeon because I love being surrounded by human viscera. There is a place in the world for people like that, but just like you probably don't want a surgeon whose driving force is getting to see your guts, few people are served well by a librarian who comes to work because they like the ambiance. Now, with that said, loving books is not a crime, or if it is, better charge me and throw away the key. See Exhibit A. I'd argue that most librarians do tend to appreciate books more than the average person, but if your goal is a professional life of being surrounded by and working with books, consider becoming an archivist, historian, bookseller, or finding a job in publishing. These all have value, and they're more likely to satisfy your professional desires without leaving you in a place where you resent the people you work to serve something I see way too often. Even a librarian who works in acquisitions, cataloging, or other non-public facing position does what they do for the sake of the people. Without robust and appropriate metadata, the books are unfindable and therefore meaningless to the people who need them. Number two, librarianship won't love you back, but the people might. When you finish library school, odds are good that you'll face a job market that demands new librarians to submit to being effectively second-class employees. The reality for most new librarians is scrabbling for hours as either a part-time or casual employee of one or more library systems. Or you might get a full-time but short-term position that lasts between 3 to 12 months and be forced to take several of these back-to-back. -back. In either case, you likely won't have benefits like healthcare or paid time off, 
or anything else unless your union's collective agreement or the law requires it. All this after you've just finished one to two years of advanced studies in a specialized field and have a diploma, not to mention the thousands of dollars of debt to show for it. But remember, it's nothing personal. It's systemic. In my video talking about why most librarians are white women, I talk a lot about the ways librarianship draws in and privileges a very specific kind of person by design, and this over-reliance on precarious work is a reflection of that. Librarianship is an institution as much as it is a profession, one that operates according to its centuries of precedent. When you're first starting out as a librarian, it'll feel like the odds are stacked against you because they are, and a big challenge of your career will be figuring out how to navigate this. An important first step to that is understanding the phenomenon known as vocational awe, a term coined by Fobazi Itar in her article Vocational Awe and Librarianship, The Lies We Tell Ourselves. Fobazi does a bang-up job in her article talking about how the perception of librarianship impacts how we treat the profession, and how it pushes us toward unnecessary self-sacrifice in the name of a higher calling. It also explores the cost of this on the individual, which, if you want to be a librarian, you owe it to yourself to understand. I've linked to her article in the video description down there, and I hope you take the time to read it. I also hope you try to become the kind of librarian that works toward reforming the profession into something more humane for all library workers. No matter where you fall in the hierarchy, you can always push for transformational change. When you're first getting started, this could be having and sticking to clear boundaries between your personal and professional lives, and supporting others who do the same. Not doing so reinforces the cultural norm that real librarians will sacrifice their own good for the wider cause. And frankly, you deserve better than that. We all deserve better than that. Number three, your MLIS is yours to waste. In North America, having an MLIS is an almost universal requirement to be a librarian. There are lots of folks out there who see this as a waste of time, effort, and money once they get a job as a librarian and find out that they don't use hardly any of their degree. I totally empathize. It ain't quick and it ain't cheap. What you learn is up to you, but usually everyone finds themselves neck deep in learning how research works, journal articles about information, social work development, the inherent unjustness of various social systems, so much group work, etc. And then when you graduate and find yourself employed at a library, it turns out that very little of what you learned is actually applicable to your day-to-day -day job. But remember, an MLIS is a graduate level course of study in a field that touches every aspect of the human condition. And on top of all that, no two degrees are the same, nor are any two libraries. I've already done a video talking about what my degree looked like and what the ALA looks for in accreditation. Go have a look if you haven't already, link up there. Uh, how useful your degree ends up being to you depends a lot on what you choose to do with it. My point here is that you'll only get from your MLIS one, what you put into it, and two, what you take from it. Anyone can go to library school with the mentality of this is just another box to tick. You can do exactly what's required and no more and leave in a year or two if that's what you want to do. But my degree isn't just a, re a record of classes or grades. It's everything I did in and out of the classroom. It was expensive and I wanted as much value for my money as possible, so here's just some of how I made that happen. I sought out one of our university librarians because she does what I want to do when I grow up, and because of that, she let me be her research assistant for a year and a half. I got paid and did actual research within the community, which is awesome. I was part of student government, which got me out of the library school bubble and had me working with folks across all disciplines, not to mention see what it takes to run a nonprofit and have a community I was responsible for. I applied for and was hired to teach technology workshops to my fellow LAS students, which gave me great experience teaching diverse groups of people complex topics. And yes, I started a YouTube channel where I make library propaganda and it's been a blast. Even if I don't use everything I learned, and I definitely won't, to be honest, I still think it leaves me a better person than I was before. Since I have that knowledge, I can push myself to find uses for it no matter where I end up. To me, the MLIS isn't the problem, it's the cost to get one. A lot of people don't go into librarianship because they don't see the cost as justified, and like rightly so, if I'm honest. Again, no one should feel compelled to sacrifice themselves at the altar of the profession. So I would love to see the ALA actually tackle education costs meaningfully. I know it's not a problem unique to librarianship, and it's certainly not the only barrier for many, but it's huge, and the ALA is the organization that requires one. Finally, this is a bonus point, you don't have to be a librarian. I want to end on this point. You can always do something else. 
You may find during your MLIS that there's something that stirs you more, or after you finish the degree, you realize that librarianship just doesn't do it for you. Or maybe the fact that the job market for librarians is way oversaturated is starting to sink in. That's all okay. Whatever you do, you deserve to be happy doing it. And an MLIS opens far more doors than just being a librarian. A quick Google search for LIS job titles will bring back a whole bunch of lists of non-librarian employment options. Requirements and experience may vary, which is why I really, really emphasize pushing yourself during your school, but for many of the jobs, the MLIS is a natural fit, and they often pay much, much better. Not many people outside of libraries know what an MLIS is, for better or worse, so it likely won't be listed as a requirement. The better indicator for job fit will be the bulk of the job description. When you read it, does it sound like at least 50% like what you can or want to do? And in any case, having a master's degree, period, will set you apart in a good way, as long as you can explain why. Now, I know there are a lot of big feelings that might come up with deciding whether to stay in librarianship or change careers. It can feel like giving up, or like you've somehow lost a competition you didn't realize you were in. It can feel like a waste of time and money that you won't get back or that you just don't have what it takes to be a librarian. These are all real feelings and you're allowed to feel them, but please remember that they aren't necessarily reflections of reality. As Captain Picard so wisely put it, It is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not a weakness. That is life. I believe I understand, sir. You can do everything right and still be let down by librarianship. If the field isn't treating you with respect, then maybe it doesn't deserve you. Recognizing your own worth and then doing something productive with it shows that you care about yourself, and that's one of the most important things you can do for anyone. But enough from me. What's your experience been like? Let me know in the comments below and check out what others have had to say down there as well. We're all in this together, and sometimes just seeing what others are going through can make our own lives and our own struggles a little bit easier. As always, thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked this video, share it with your peers if you're so inclined, and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more stuff like this. And until next time, don't forget to ask questions. Okay, bye.